Hi everyone, this is Freyal from Scrumptious Cakes by Fairy and welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I'm going to share with you a very special and delicious recipe, my cinnamon rolls. Um, I have been receiving quite a lot of requests on my Instagram and on my Facebook to share this recipe with you and now I'm going to share with you. Some people call them cinnamon rolls, some people call them cinnamon buns, some people call them sticky buns, so whatever you call them, they are the most delicious things on this planet Earth. And if you have tried cinnamon rolls from the company called Cinnabons, then I'm telling you right now, you are going to love this. My mom thinks that my cinnamon rolls are better than the original cinnamons from Cinnabon Company. So I think you try this recipe and be the judge and let me know how it goes on. And if you wanna learn how to make them step by step, then please keep watching this video. To make the dough for our cinnamon rolls, you need 4 cups of bread flour. If you can't find the bread flour, you can use plain flour. We need 1 tablespoon of vanilla extract, half cup of granulated sugar, 2 large eggs at room temperature, 1 third cup of margarine, 2 and a 1 fourth teaspoon of active dry yeast, 2 tablespoon of full fat dry milk powder, 1 cup of lukewarm milk, so now in a large mixing bowl, I am going to add the sugar followed by the milk. Make sure the milk is not too hot or otherwise it is going to kill the yeast. Now I'm going to add the yeast and we'll give it a good stir and we'll leave it aside for 15 minutes in a warm place. In the bread flour, I'm going to add the milk powder and we'll give it a good stir so it's well combined. In the eggs, I am going to add the flavoring, vanilla extract. So after 15 minutes, you can see the yeast has bloomed and it's kind of like a frothy. If it's not frothy like this, then it means you have killed the yeast, your milk was probably too warm. Now add the margarine and the eggs and I'm going to beat them together in my standing mixer and I'm going to use the dough hook. Now I'm going to beat this mixture until the margarine is broken into pieces and then I will add the flour mix gradually into this mixture and I will keep mixing it slowly. Now I'm going to add the flour a little bit more. You have to add the flour gradually, don't just dump it at once. Just keep adding the flour and keep mixing it slowly and it will start forming a dough. Now you can see it has started forming a dough. Now I am going to add the last of my flour and now I'm going to mix it for a little longer on a medium speed until the dough is smooth. So after kneading for about 5-7 minutes as you can see the dough is not sticking to my hands and it looks quite smooth. Now I'm going to dust the counter with some plain flour and will knead my dough by hands. I really like to do this last step because I really want to feel the dough by hand um, and after, be after kneading um, the dough by hand you really feel the difference in the dough. The dough textures really improves. So I'm just going to knead it like you knead a pizza dough. So kneading by hand will improve the texture of the dough and I really like the end result. Now I'm happy with the smoothness of the dough. Now I'm going to take a bowl. I have greased the bowl with some cooking oil. Now I'm going to put the dough in the bowl and will coat the dough in the cooking oil as well so it doesn't create um, a crust and I'm going to tightly wrap my bowl with a cling film and we'll leave it aside for about three hours 
to rise until it gets double in size now after three hours you can see the dough has risen so much it's like double the size we had now I'm going to lightly dust the surface with some plain flour and we will start rolling it at this point don't knead the dough just take it out of the bowl put it on the counter and try to shape it a rectangular shape by hands just spread it by hands in in a rectangular shape so it, it makes the work easier when you uh, use the rolling pin afterwards now I'm going to use the rolling pin and we'll roll the dough in a rectangular shape you need about 22 inches to 17 inches in size so what I do is once I have rolled the dough then I take the measuring tape and measure the dough length so you need 22 inches and then 17 inches that's perfect just try to make the corners right as much as you can so for the filling I'm using half cup of dark brown sugar half cup of light brown sugar and two tablespoon of ground cinnamon powder and I'm going to mix it well make sure the brown sugar does not have any lumps and the cinnamon powder has incorporated well now I'm going to take one cup of unsalted butter at room temperature and I'm going to spread the butter over the rolled dough to spread the butter I use my gloves because it is a really really messy work Make sure you cover the dough very well. So once you have spread the butter over the dough, now we are going to spread the brown sugar mix. Spread the brown sugar mixture evenly and if you see any lumps then just break them down. Just make sure that you don't miss any space. So once you have spread the brown sugar just start rolling the dough from the top. Tightly roll the dough from the top and keep coming down. So once the dough is rolled, I'm going to take a thread and will mark the dough to cut the cinnabons. It will make about 12 cinnabons and each cinnabon is going to be about 2 inches in size. So I'm just eyeballing. To cut the cinnabons, uh, you take the thread underneath the dough and where we have marked just cross over the thread and it will give you a really nicely cut cinnamon roll now I'm going to take this baking tray the tray is about an inch or so deep I have lined it with parchment paper or baking paper and now I'm going to put the cinnabons um, into the tray the tray size is so perfect it takes about 12 cinnabons in the tray do not put them too close to each other because they need space to spread and rise once they are baked they will be very big so in the meantime I have turned the oven on 280 degree 
Celsius and I will let it preheat for about 15 minutes and until then my cinnamons are going to have a second rise I just got an extra cinnamon which I have left in a tiny baking cake tin I will bake them for about 15 to 18 minutes and in the meantime I'm going to make the frosting you need 200 grams of Philadelphia cream cheese full fat you need butter 1 4th cup some vanilla extract and about one and a half cup of icing sugar just sift the icing sugar so it doesn't have any lumps I am going to use my standing mixture with the paddle attachment I'm going to add the butter and the vanilla extract and we'll beat it a little now I'm going to add the Philadelphia cream cheese make sure you drain the water now I'm going to beat until the butter and the cream cheese are well combined now you can see the cream cheese and butter both are very well combined now I'm going to start adding the icing sugar in this mixture just slowly add the icing sugar and keep mixing it in the end I'm going to scrape the sides of the bowl and then I'm going to beat it again for the last time you need to make sure that everything is very well combined and this frosting is going to be little runny now our cinnamon rolls are ready they took about 18 minutes in my oven I'm going to let them cool on a cooling rack and while they're cooling I'm going to use melted butter to brush on the top By brushing the butter you are making sure that they don't form any crust and they stay soft so if you skip this uh, part then the cinnamon rolls are going to be crusty on the top which you really don't want this step will make sure that the cinnamon rolls are moist and soft from the inside and from the top now after 5 minutes of them cooling on the rack, I am going to add the cream cheese frosting. I like to add the cream cheese frosting while they are still a little warm because then the cream cheese frosting melts into the layers of the cinnamon rolls and I really really like that. So what I do is I just dollop the cream cheese frosting on each cinnamon and then I take the palette knife and spread it around you can eat them hot you can eat them cold I personally like them a little hot even when I have made them and I'm eating it later on I really like to warm them up in the microwave for about 30 seconds and they really feels like they are freshly baked and out of the oven so here we have our delicious home baked cinnamon rolls I absolutely love them just tell me how can you resist these beauties you just cannot I personally like to add some salted caramel on top of these if you like you can add Nutella or Biscoff choice is yours just be creative make them versatile according to your taste palette 
they are just super delicious if you don't want to add anything they are good as it is with the cream cheese frosting I hope you like this recipe and I hope you are going to give this a try and share with your family and friends. Um, so if you have liked my video then please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button to this video and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!